through your time because I know you've got practice. So, um, yeah, you were talking about your uh, Ramadan schedule. We said this is your first fight, uh, fight camp and um, fight during Ramadan, being that you are obviously in Fortis MMA in Texas right now. So just tell me a little bit about what you're doing differently because it's Ramadan. Like, how does it change your training regimen? So basically, um, since I knew I had this fight um, around, you know, in the end of April or, or beginning of May, so I had enough time to prepare for this fight. And my goal was to reach Ramadan at a lower walk around weight than I usually am, you know, three weeks before the fight. And at a higher peak shape um, than I usually am three weeks out. So, like, my main goal was to reach Ramadan and fight shape and fight weight. So that way, when Ramadan comes, all I have to do is just maintain and not have to, like, you know, kill myself cutting weight while fasting and, um, you know, not have to go through the hardest MMA trainings um, while fasting. Because I knew things are different here where, you know, the, the, the training schedule at the gym is the same. I have to adapt myself. Whereas when I used to train in the Middle East, um, you know, the gyms would close kind of during the day and then open at night and just make it easier for whoever is fasting to train. So um, I had to tweak a lot of uh, different things. But in the end, you know, it's something doable, but it's definitely not something easy. So give me an example of what your day is usually like. Because obviously Ramadan, like it, you've got one consistent thing in terms of when you break your fast. And then you said the timings of the trainings obviously don't change because everybody around you isn't in the same circumstance. So just give me an example of how one of your days would go, like in terms of when you so, train and all that. Yeah, Yeah. so um, in my usual, in my regular days, I would have like my morning trainings, like 9 a.m. to around 11 Mm -hmm. And then at night, I would have like 7 p.m. until like 9.30. Um, and breaking our fast right now is at 8.30 p.m., which is in the middle of the most intense, most important MMA classes of the day. Um, so what I ended up doing is my morning sessions, I switched them to midnight because that's something I could kind of control because it's more of like the physical trainings, like the cardio, the strength you know, running, all of that. And then the night trainings, which is like 7 to 9.30, those stayed the same. And I just go to training fasting and in the middle of the session, which would be like 8.30 when it's time to break the fast, I'll take like a three-minute break just to drink water and have a couple of dates and then just get back to training. And... Um, you know, training is really intense and no excuses. Like I'm treated like any other person in the gym. Um, like, you know, I'm not, I'm not giving any slack. I have to keep training hard. So, um, you know, I just, I just fight through it. And then like around 9.30, we finish training. I'll, um, I'll already have my meal preps with me. I'll, I'll have one meal at like around 10 PM, even though I'm supposed to break my fast at 8.30. So like, my first meal is at 10.30, 10, 10 p.m. And then, um, you know, I'd come back, go to the mosque, pray, um, just have a little rest, go home, have another meal. And then I do my training again, um, usually like 12 a.m. or 1 a.m., sometimes 2, you know, depending on how I feel. Um, train pretty hard, like do some conditioning. Um, or some uh, bag work, you know, by myself. Um, or with Mohammed Fakhreddin, which is also fighting and brave. We'll meet up and we'll do some, you know, boxing work or wrestling or whatever. Um, and then I'll sleep around 5 a.m. I'll do my, my, my first prayer of the day. Mm -hmm. But then I'll, I'll do that, the Fajr prayer. I'll pray. And then I'll sleep. I, I change my sleeping schedule just so it could make things a bit easier. Um, so fasting is kind of like intermittent fasting, except that you don't eat or drink for like 16 hours. And, um, it's pretty hard because 
you know, um, you get dehydrated a lot while fasting and training. And our training itself is very brutal. You lose like five to six pounds of sweat um, with the sessions. So I go up and down about like 12 pounds every day. It's like it's really like cutting weight for me every day. Like, like from 5 a.m. I'll be a certain weight, and then 8 p.m. I'll be lower than that weight by 12 pounds, and then by the time it's 5 a.m. again, I'll regain those 12 pounds I lost because it's all just, um, you know, liquids and sweat. And are you feeling? Oh. Sorry, are you feeling like it's having like a negative impact on you? Like when you show up to training the next morning, are you feeling more tired because you're putting on and on and off all these pounds? Or is it something that with changing your schedule and your sleep and everything that you've kind of not maybe mastered, but kind of like handled right now? I mean, um, it's something that you just have to do very, very precisely and correctly and you'll be all right. Like there's just there's just no room for any mistakes, you know, like it all goes down to how much sleep you're getting, how much, what you're eating, how much you're eating, what you're drinking. Um, you know, you need to make sure you have a lot of electrolytes in your system. Like, you know, you need to drink a lot of water, um, eat very healthy. You know, there's no room for like, you know, eating crappy foods like sugar, fast food or anything. Cause you know, every single calorie that you're eating in, in that very short period of time that you can eat counts towards your performance the next day and your recovery from your training. So, yeah, you do get tired sometimes physically, but and then whenever you start, you know, bringing in the mental aspect out of it where, like, you know, this is a challenge and MMA is all about, you know, fighting through challenges, that's whenever I get my strength. Like, I would feel a little bit fatigued or tired. But I mean, who doesn't in their last two weeks training camp? So um, I'll start, you know, thinking of like the positive things I can get out of this mental challenge. And um, I always feel good, like right after I break my fast. It's really like a weight cut recovery. Like I, I feel like I, I'm mastering the weight cut and post weight cut um, recovery just because I do it every day. So I know exactly, you know, what electrolyte drinks to drink, what coconut waters work with me the best, what nutrition, what foods to eat right after, um, how to discipline myself and not eat just right after the breaking my fast to just eat so much and then feel bloated. Um, I actually feel like I'm mastering this, um, what exactly what to do. And, um, I like it because it's something I've never done before and it's definitely not easy. So it's a it's a big challenge going into this fight and it's something I'm really proud to be doing. And now that you've done it for a good, what is it, like 10 days, would you ever do that again? Would you ever take a fight during Ramadan or is this something that you'll probably try not to do? That's actually a great question. This is going to be my last resort from now on. Like, <laughs> okay. I would like... You know, like, I'd love to fight before, I would fight after, but, um, like I said, this isn't something I would want to do. This isn't something um, I look forward to doing, is fighting in Ramadan. But it's something I, I felt like I had to do it this year, because the timing it came around. Um, you know, like, I have a really busy summer for me, my personal life. So, I it was either to fight now, or to wait until like November until I could fight again. So I, I don't like long breaks. I like to stay busy. So the best case scenario that would ever be for me, like in the future, would to fight like, let's say, a week before Ramadan starts where I could really take the month not completely off, but to just focus more on what Ramadan is really about, um, kind of give my body a rest. This would be like my only month during the year that I wouldn't fight in. Training would be um, cut down a bit, just focus more on worship and, uh, you know, just doing more good. Uh, I'm still trying to balance it out, this camp, in, in doing both. But, you know, ideally, I would like to keep this month um, to myself, always. 
Absolutely. And let's rewind back because I do remember last time I spoke to you, we were talking about, you know, you told me you had like a lot of personal stuff to deal with in the summer and we were talking about when you wanted to get back in there, but I didn't expect it to be, to be honest, like in, in June. So did you just suddenly decide that you wanted to fight or was that on your mind? Like, I want to fight soon because I remember when I spoke to you it didn't seem like it was something you wanted to automatically like right away do but at the same time you didn't want to take too much time off but when did you decide like right I want to fight in June yeah well the thing is is that I did a surgery right after my fight in March yeah. so um I it was too early like it would have been perfect to fight in Indonesia mm -hmm. but it was too early for the recovery but at the same time it would it would really be like I either fight in May or June or wait until November because um, what I have going on. Um, and for me, it was like May is... Um, it's just going to be harder. And then um, I was like, no, I'd rather do something harder than, um, you know, just wait and be put on the shelf. I, I like to stay active. So um, that was something I kind of had in mind. Um, as a worst case scenario, but you know, I'm going through it and it, it's not, it's not, not as bad. Like, you know, I have, I have 12 months a year, 11, I have 12 months and I, you know, I did, I'd love to do like four fights a year. Um, you know, it doesn't have to be in this month out of the 12 months. But again, like I said, if I had to, I would, but I would always love to see if I have any um, choices to, you know, fight either before or after. Definitely. And and let's talk about your fight. Of course, you're taking on Eric Carlson in Belfast, Northern Ireland. You asked to be on this card. Did you just really want to fight in Europe for the first time in your career? No, I just wanted to fight. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. In June, and it happened to be in Europe. Okay. Um, and I was like, yeah, let's do it, you know? First fight in Europe, first Brave in Europe, and I'm all about... And every time I see an opportunity, I just jump on it. All right, and he called you out, correct? Is that the way the fight came about? Yeah, yeah, he called me out, um, but uh, I was I was impressed by Eric and, uh, because of his win over Gaziev. Mm -hmm. um, you know, Gaziev is a really tough guy. Um, he's beat some, you know, he beat tough people. The The last fight he had was a really, you know, tough matchup, and he, he beat the guy. Um, also, uh, you know, lots of respect to my Middle Eastern uh, friend, Ahmed Amir. But, um, you know, when I watched the fight, Honestly, I, I felt like the the fight went to Eric. Um, I felt like the first round, I, I if I remember correctly, it was either the first and the third or the first and the second for Eric. And then one round for Ahmed. But, um, you know, it could have been either way. But in, in my eyes, I just felt like because of the knockdowns yeah. and um, the more control he had, Yeah, and he's also dropping down from Walter Waite, so he's going to be a big boy. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, I, I, fought, I fought tough people. I fought big people. Um, like Charlie Leary, for example, is a really tough guy, very durable. And he looked pretty huge to me. Uh, so, uh, I just feel like this is going to be a, a good challenge that I'm just going to fight through and come out victorious. And I remember asking you about the Charlie Leary fight when it was booked and how I felt like it would be a risk. And, um, and, and I, I mean, I kind of feel the same way in the sense that Carlson has a lot more to gain than you do. But you just want to fight, right? You, you don't care about that. I mean, I ask you this every single time. But to you, uh, you don't mind who's put in front of you, right? You just want to fight. Yeah, I mean, like, you know... We're in the fighting game, you know. Everything in our life is about risk. You know, I could fight a guy that's never fought in his life and then just one punch or one thing can end the whole thing. So everything about our our sport is like a risk. And mm -hmm. to me, 
a loss is a loss. Like he's a big name, then lose to like some someone that has losses or like a nobody. To me, a loss is a loss, and it's a and it, it's something I never want to go through. You know, a world class champion or someone doing their pro debut, I never want to lose. So to me, you're gonna put anyone in front of me. You know, I'm going to do everything I can to the last breath I have to beat that person. You know, so yeah. um, I just want to fight and I want to keep fighting. And, you know, I don't I don't really have time. You know, um, he has my respect. He's a very tough guy. And um, you're cutting up a little bit. Do you mind repeating that? Sorry, yeah. He's a, he's a tough guy, you know. He fought, like, his losses are to, like, tough people. Um, so I'm not taking anything away from him. Uh, in, the, in the Middle East, pound for pound, and, like, welterweight, uh, he lost to him. And um, Jarrah was, like, double his size, too. So uh, this guy is very durable. He's... But at the same time, I have 100% confidence that I'm going to beat him, inshallah, with all the hard work. I'm going to beat this guy. And if you break down his skill set, I mean, you clearly watched his last couple of fights. He shared a couple of cards with you as well. But how would you break down his skill set? I mean, how do you see this fight playing out? Um, I... I, I see that he does each fight, he does the same thing. He starts off very aggressive in the first minute, and then he just rushes people. Durable, and he can he stay composed during the whole fight. And, like, nothing phases him. Like, he could get, let's say, knocked down and just get back up as if it's nothing. Um, you know, his style, I feel like it's the same for all of the fights, where, um, you know, he'll start off striking really aggressively you know doing a lot of kicks and then he'll rush his opponents to the cage and try to take them down so um you know he does he does stand up he does the ground game he does he doesn't have a particular game like specific somewhere he just goes everywhere and i feel like i'm the same way um as you could see my my journey in Brave, some fights I would just take them strictly to the ground, some fights strictly stand up, and then most of my fights where I just mix it up to wherever I'm comfortable and to wherever each part of the fight needs to go, I will take it there. So me coming to this fight against um, Eric Carlson, um, it's going to be on the stand up, it's going to be on the ground, it's going to be on the cage, it's going to be everywhere. But most importantly, this fight is going to be all about, you know, who wants it more, who could take the most damage and keep going moving forward. Um, it's going to be action packed. Um, you know, there's there's things that I could tell you about me and Eric is that you know we're both well rounded. He has a very tough heart and he's very durable, and I have. Um, pretty good um, stamina. I can keep a pace going. So what I'm trying to tell you from what I just said is that this fight is going to be very, very action-packed. And I've never said that and was wrong. Every time I said there was blood, <laughs> there was a lot of blood. Every time I said the pace is going to be high, the pace was very high. Absolutely. Every time I said, you know, you know, the, the fight is going to be crazy, it's going to be crazy. It's, you know, um, I'm not sure when the finish is going to be there exactly but i feel um it would all go down to how much damage he can take and where is his breaking point and i will do my best to find that and, and take him out there awesome awesome and 
A couple more questions before I let you go. Uh, there's now an interim lightweight champion in Lucas Minero, as well as uh, Altman obviously being the champion. You got to assume that there will be a title unification bout between the two. But if not, I mean, we talked about this, how you'd rather not uh, have to fight a fellow Arab or someone from the Middle East. But now that Minero is the interim champion, if Altman doesn't come back at the end of the year, uh, is that a fight that interests you? I know you're not looking past Carlson, but do you think about the possibility yeah. now? So yeah, you already know me good enough to know that I don't I don't talking about things. Honestly, um, you know, uh, I still have a really big fight coming forward, and um, sure. yeah. I really do not like to think anything beyond this fight until this fight. And um, I know that me and you are gonna have a conversation right after this fight, <laughs> and I know that Brave is gonna be all over it. So let me just finish. For from my next goal, which is um, Brave 13, and I mean, it, it. I mean, what do you think? I mean, I I just won four fights in Brave. Inshallah, Brave 13, I'll win the fifth with. And he's not the champion yet. I mean, I don't know. It doesn't make sense to me, but you know, this is MMA, I guess. Politics. I don't know what you want to call it, but. After this fight, you know, I, I've just been doing whatever Brave asked me to do. You know, Brave never offered me a title shot. They just kept offering me fights. I was like, you know, let's do this. So what would make sense after this fight? It's very obvious. I don't have to be like a smart person to tell you that I deserve a title shot. I mean, it's just really obvious. So I'm just going to let Brave do the decision and, um, you know, talk to me after this fight and we'll see what we're going to do but I mean there's really like I don't feel like there's nothing else that could make sense um, after this fight inshallah when I get this victory but um, I don't like to talk into it as details you know so many things could happen so so I just want to get this fight done and then you know that's the that's the only thing that would be there I guess after this fight you know so um, we'll see we'll see what's going to happen Definitely. And uh, one more thing um, before I let you go. Do you have a prediction? I know you told me it's going to be an action-packed fight, but do you have a prediction of, do you envision uh, how you see this fight playing out with Carlson on June 9th? Um, honestly, I have seen like 100 possible different ways this fight has ended. Um, you know, maybe by like a submission on the ground like i feel like maybe i would put too much pressure on him he'd have to give up a certain submission um you know maybe i could catch him on stand up you know there's there's just so many different ways and um you know i've been i've been lucky to have finished all my fights in a way that i have imagined before but i mean like i said i mean there's like so many possible out- that could happen there's so many things that could you know get get into role i have a lot of weapons i could use a lot of um different things i can do to get the finish and to get the win so this this fight um like the finish could really be um very sudden like you know like i said because the the pace is gonna be high um he's and uh you know it's gonna be a really high pace everything can happen like any second so um, maybe like a like a a lot of pressure on the ground, and then he'd have to give me a submission, and I'll just take that from him, or um, you know just a lot of ground and pound. Uh, maybe just catch him on stand up, and then you know finish on that. There's there's a lot of possible ways that this fight could go, just because um, you know we're both well rounded, and we could take the fight um, anywhere comfortably. So. Wherever there's going to be a chance for me to finish, I will finish. All right, there you have it. You can catch Abdul Karim Sulwedi. Of course, he takes on Eric Carlson at Brave Combat Federation 13 in Belfast, Northern Ireland, June 9th. Abdul Karim, thank you so much for your time and best of luck on June 9th. Yeah, definitely. Thank you, Farah. See you soon.